Welcome back, everyone. Yep, and welcome to the Hydrogen Fuel Cells and Batteries Group Exhibit. We are at the Technical Forum. This afternoon, our topic is fuel cells and their components. And the presentation uh, next up is oil-free turbo compressor systems for fuel cells. Uh, today, talking to us for this, we have Patrick Frolich, who is the sales manager at Celeroton. So if everyone could put their hands together and give him a warm welcome while we enter this interesting topic. Good afternoon, all together. Um, I'll show you, i introduce to you um, Celeroton and then all three turbo compressors. Celeroton is a company, is the leading company in ultra high speed electrical drive systems. One of the product is turbo compressors. We have been founded in 2008 as a spin off of the ETH Zurich and we are located in Volketsville near Zurich. We have 26 employees and sales partners in eight countries. The four product lines, starting with oil-free turbo compressors, converters, ultra-high-speed motors, and magnetically levitated droppers. Now we talk about oil-free compressors. To design a gas-bearing compressor, and especially a miniaturized compressor, you have um, the system. You have always to consider the system design, starting from the thermodynamics. Um, this is the compressor part the compressor stage with um, rotor dynamics because we operate at very high speeds um, beyond 100,000 RPM. Going to thermal design, um, the smaller the system is, the higher is the power density and you have to get rid of, um, of the heat of the losses. Also stress, uh, material stress is very high at high speeds. Motor design and last but not least bearing design. We use ball bearing for, uh, for prototypes and we develop gas and magnetic bearings for, um, for products. And last but not least, we also do the electronics to deliver a system and not only a component. Designing a turbo compressor basically is um, divided in four steps. It starts with a 1D uh, design. It's basically calculations. Uh, it's 2D design with um, validation, 3D design with evaluation and also comparison of uh, measurement data after production. 1D design, we start with a preliminary check of uh, gas metal. This is not necessary for air, but this is necessary, for example, for hydrogen compressors. Um, in the first step, it's uh, concluded if you have a single stage or multi-stage design. This depends on the requirements. And very important for turbo compressors, you can design turbo compressors for one operating point. This is here the red point red dot and the other operating points have to fit in this compressor map you develop. So what you see here on the right is a compressor map um, with pressure ratio over mass flow respectively over volume flow. The results of the first study is um, you have a basic idea of the size of a compressor, you have uh, first compressor maps and you have a pretty good idea um, what the compressor can deliver for pressure ratio, mass flow, and whatnot. In the next step, in the 2D design, you already design the, the turbo. So this part, uh, you have um, basically a good idea of the speeds, of the uh, geometry, and um, you design the impeller, diffuser, and any part you need for the uh, pressure generation. In the next step, 3D performance evaluation. You recalculate um, what you have designed. You see if your model is um, high accuracy or not. You can calculate the different operating points. And now you see if your compressor can meet the requirements or not. Going on um, also with, um, with adaptions and with optimization in this step. The result of this is um, production ready um, drawing set for your impeller, and then you can start producing a prototype. Last step is after you have produced your prototypes, that you test it, that you measure it, and that you compare your measurement data with, uh, with the calculated results, and perhaps you have to adjust the calculated results little, slightly. So, but I also want to, I not only want to talk about the aerodynamics, so the aerodynamic part is here in front, the compressor part, but we are talking about oil-free turbo compressors. 
We manage oil free by using a gas bearing. The gas bearing is a contact free bearing operating with air as lubricant and therefore you don't have any oil in the system by design. Um, the fact that the gas bearing is operating without contact, contact free, um, the lifetime is theoretically unlimited and start-stop cycles with our design have been uh, tested up to 250,000 start-stop cycles. The system is very compact and um, operation is silent. If anyone has been to our booth and says it's silent, what you hear at the booth is the airflow. It's not the compressor itself. So if you go to our booth, it's E53-1, uh, you will hear the compressor quite loud, but this is uh, airflow itself. If you have a filter in front of it and the fuels are stacked behind it, it's quite low. You see here is a typical compressor map of one of our products. It's a one kilowatt compressor um, with inlet pressure one bar. Um, pressure ratio is uh, up to 1.7. For turbo compressors, you always talk about pressure ratio. So if the inlet pressure goes down, also your outlet pressure will, will be lower and your delta P will be lower. On the next sheet, you see a comparison of measurement data and calculated data. The solid lines is the calculated data, and the dots are the measurement points. You see two facts in this sheet. On the left, it's limited. It's the so-called search line. It's a dynamic instability where the compressor will not operate. And on the right side, you see um, that the, um, the efficiency goes down. You also see it in the power consumption by increasing uh, the mass flow. So you don't operate a, a turbo compressor in the right lower part. So to be honest, this part here should be removed from the compressor map because you don't operate a turbo compressor there. But in principle, it's possible. Now I also want to introduce our converters, in particular our fuel cell converters. Um, we have a special line fuel cell converters. Um, they are equipped with two different power inputs to start the compressor from battery and to directly supply the compressor after the fuel cell stack produces um, energy from the fuel cell. Here's an example for a 1 kilowatt, 5 kilowatt, and 12 kilowatt system. The 12 kilowatt system, you see the picture, it's still under development and expected to be read, uh, prototype ready end of this year. And you see the different input voltages. It's 40 to 120 volts, 300 to 550 volts. This depends on the stack. And the idea is to deliver with the lowest voltage the, uh, the highest power. So this is the design parameter for the converters. I already talked about search. Search is a common known um, phenomenon with turbo machines. If you have search or stall, um, your pressure is too high on the outlet of a compressor, and in worst case, the flows goes reverse through the machine. This will lead to incredible high forces on the plates, and you basically will destroy the compressor. So you have to avoid this operating in any, any kind. Our converters are equipped with um, a so-called search line protection, meaning if you go too close to the search line, there will be a warning for the converters for fuel cells by CAN. And if you go closer to the, to the search line, um, the compressor will be shut off. But this can be customized. There can be done any other action. But this feature is implemented in our converters. So the fuel cell system, what are the advantages of using Celeroton um, turbo compressors or Celeroton air supply? You have an oil-free and lubricant-free um, supply, air supply. It's silent operation. It's very highly dynamical for pressure and mass flow control, basically without any valves. It's compact, and um, due to the high efficiency, the power consumption is low. Here see a typical schematics of a fuel cell, and Celero can deliver the compressor, as I mentioned, the converter connected to the battery and to the fuel cell stack itself, and um, we can uh, customize design, also design the recirculation pump. I want to introduce this uh, compressor. Last sheets, it's for CT22. Um, this compressor is developed in the Inbalance project. It's for a 100 kilowatt fuel cell stack, and we have a mock-up with us here. This compressor will be available beginning of next year. 
Here you see the compressor map. It's um, basically different to the one you have seen earlier. It's up to uh, 155 gram per second and pressure up to 2.5 bar. It depends on the inlet pressure if you can operate the comp uh, compressor at the, at the higher lines. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Frolich, for that very informative presentation. Um, are there any questions at this point? No? OK, so if there's nothing, uh, no questions at this very moment, I'm sure um, Mr. Frolich will be around at booth E53-1. So if you think of anything later, I'm sure you can drop by for a chat. So thanks once again. Thank you very much. Uh, our next presentation will begin in about 10 minutes. Uh, and it will be on testing and, demonstra and demonstration of fuel cells <laughs> and hydrogen technologies at the Technical University of Denmark. So I invite you all to um, maybe stretch your legs a bit, but come on back, continue enjoying a drink, and join me for the next presentation in fuel cells and their components. Thanks a lot. <laughs>